We come from lots of different backgrounds. What holds us together is our desire to practice the Dharma. A couple of years after John Fuhrman passed away, a group of people came from Bangkok and they asked me, are there any amazing, miraculous things that a John Fuhrman had done while he was alive? And they're hoping for you know, psychic powers, that kind of thing. But I told him that what I found most amazing was that even though he was Thai and I was American, that when we communicated, it, the fact that he was Thai and the fact that I was an American just didn't seem to matter. It was just one human being to another. I thought that was amazing. And it wasn't just with the John Fuang, the people who came to the monastery, especially when we were working together on the, building the jetty, building the Buddha image. There's a very strong sense of extended family. A lot of camaraderie, a lot of fellowship. But as I got to know the people, I began to realize that when we weren't working on Dharma projects or talking about the Dharma, that when they started talking about their background, it was something very foreign, people that I, otherwise I probably never would have connected with. But it was the fact that we were able to step out of our backgrounds and look at them from the point of view of the Dharma. That's what made all the differences okay and understandable, because everybody was willing to step out. Because this is what the Dharma is. We're stepping out of our culture. This is John Munn's favorite teaching was the customs of the Noble Ones. He was accused of not following traditional Thai customs or traditional Lao customs. He'd always say, I'm, those are the customs of people with defilement. That applies to any cult country's customs. He was interested in putting an end to suffering. And that required the customs of the Noble Ones, the culture of the Noble Ones. Because after all, the problem of suffering is something that is pre-cultural. Even before we know we have a culture, we're already experiencing pain, getting upset, physical pain, mental pain. You come out of the womb, and there it is, pain. And it's a problem we've been relating to ever since then. And so the extent to which we focus on that as our priority, that's what brings us together. The Buddha did have an appreciation of diversity, but the kind of diversity he appreciated was that of diverse talents. He has a list of his preeminent monk and nun and lay men and lay women disciples. And what he points out is that each individual has a particular kind of talent and they have something to offer to the group. That's distinctive. But it's all for the same purpose. And so here we are, coming from many different backgrounds ourselves, different parts of the world, different strata of society. What puts us together is the fact that we have this common aspiration, this common goal. We want to take the Buddha's analysis of suffering, which is the same for everybody. He focused on what we all have in common in terms of why we're suffering. We may be clinging to different things, but the clinging itself is the problem. And the dynamic of clinging and the dynamic of putting an end to it, it's the same for everybody. There are minor differences in terms of the particulars of your clinging. And these are things that we all have to work out for ourselves. But the basic structure is the same, and this was the Buddha's genius. He came from a particular strata of society, Indian society, noble warrior class. But his analysis of suffering and the causes of suffering, the end of suffering, had nothing to do with India or noble warrior caste. Just the way the mind works. So 
So as we focus on this, it's what, what keeps us working together, coming together. It's one of the factors that the Buddha talked about is how a group stays together. We look at our society now and everything seems to be tearing apart. And it's good to think about how we stay together. There's six qualities in all. The first three have to do with goodwill. The Buddha could have stated all of them simply as goodwill. But I think he wants to emphasize goodwill, goodwill, goodwill. This is what underlies everything. A wish for true happiness, a wish that everybody can find true happiness. He says you express goodwill in your actions, and you express goodwill in your words, and you express goodwill in your thoughts. And as long as we're extending thoughts of goodwill to one another, it's a lot easier to live together. The fourth quality is generosity. If you have something to share, you share it with a group. This creates a sense of camaraderie. I have a student who was living up in northwestern Thailand, out in the woods. There were a group of monks scattered around the woods, and someone would come once a month or so and bring provisions for the monks. And as long as everybody was sharing, they were happy. Well, they found out that the monk who was looking after the provisions was holding extra off for himself. And immediately there was conflict in the group because of that. Because when you have something to share and you give it, that's what creates and cements a bond of fellowship. Then the last two qualities are holding virtue in common and right view in common. As long as we're all holding by the precepts, we all trust one another that we're not lying, we're not taking things, it's so much easier to live with one another. But in particular, having our views in common. Starting with the views on the Buddhist teachings on karma. That you do have choices, and different actions have different consequences, but they do have consequences. So you want to be careful about how you act. That's the essence of right view right there. It doesn't require that you be Buddhist in order to believe it. And when I have run into some people who thought that their actions were totally determined by their genes. But if you want to live together, you have to realize, you have to admit, okay, I do make choices and my choices are going to have consequences, so I better be careful. And as long as everybody shares that view together, we can live with one another. Basically what it comes down to is we all have the same goal in common. We're trying to head to the same place, to the end of suffering. The Buddha talks about people who are born in darkness, people who are born in brightness. People go in darkness and go in brightness. He works out all the permutations. What it comes down to is it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Darkness, of course, is a state where the family is poor, it's not educated, you've got wrong view. In other words, you're born into really difficult circumstances as far as the, your ability to find the Dharma and practice the Dharma. Born into brightness is when the circumstances are easy. But there are people born in brightness who go in darkness. In other words, they behave in ways that are going to pull them down. And there are people who are born either in brightness or darkness or going in the bright direction, observing the precepts, training the mind. And that's what matters. It's where you're going that matters. As the Buddha said, his teaching is essentially a path. And the image of the path means basically that we're going someplace. Even as we're sitting here focusing on the present moment, it's not just the present moment that's at stake here. It's what comes afterwards as well. There are ways of finding happiness in the present moment that are going to be okay for the present, but they're going to turn into something else down the line. You don't want those. And sometimes there's pain in the present moment, but you learn how to relate it to it in the proper way so that it actually leads to something good down the line. So the question is, where do these things go? That's what we're focusing on. And 
It's having a sense that we're all heading in the same direction. That's what enables us to live with one another, we're trying to put an end to suffering. We're trying to see our sufferings, the particulars of our sufferings, within the framework that the Buddha provided. And when we have that common framework, that enables us to live with the differences that we have. So they're there, but they don't get in the way. We're not trying to obliterate them, but ultimately they don't matter, because we're focusing on something that everybody has in common. We're all suffering from our own actions. And we all want to learn how not to do that. And realize that our suffering from our own actions doesn't stop just with us, but it makes us a burden on other people too. This is why practicing the Dharma is a gift, both to ourselves and other people. It's a, one of those kinds of generosity that allows us to live together. So our differences don't scrape up against one another. And that's for whatever special talents we may have to offer to the group, to offer to the, to the practice. They're all welcome. because we're all headed in the same direction. <laughs>